Good evening and welcome to another edition of Down to the Wire. I'm your host, Cardiologist, and joining me again this week is Capping with Candace. Candace here. Candace, this is what's known in the business as Separation Saturday. We uh, finally get to kind of separate some of the contenders from the pretenders, and we also get some horses coming off the layoffs. So we're going to focus in exclusively on the three-year-old preps. Um, we're going to take a look at the Gotham. Then we're going to go to Tampa Bay, which we always have to mention is quirky. And then we're going to go to the San Felipe. So let's start off with the Gotham. Uh, kind of a surprise when Ocean Knight did not go to this race. A few horses entered. So it's kind of got a bigger feel than what was initially planned. It does. I think the presence of Ocean Knight kind of scared a few away coming off of his big Sam F. Davis win. And then when they changed their mind and are running him at Tampa, we got a bigger field maybe you know some horses who i don't think are really competitive in this spot but they show back up here when we look back now uh to the holy well, not to the withers uh, with um el kabir and classy class dueled all the way around the track they're both back here and it'd be hard it'd be hard pressed not to think we'll get a similar pace there with those two up front there's also several other horses here who tend to run forward so I think this is going to be a tough task for El Kybir to win this race. I do expect him to run well. I'd be surprised if he didn't hit the board just on his class alone. But I think he's going to be in trouble again up here in the front end in a race that has legitimate speed. So when I looked at this race, I looked for a horse who's proven coming from off the pace. And I landed on Tiz Shady, who's only ran one time. And yes, it was at Parks. But he came from off the pace there, won really easily, really well visually. It was just a beautiful race to watch. He looks like a big horse, long stride. That was only over five and a half furlongs, too. And this is Tiz now out of an AP Endymere Ender sister who won the Florida Oaks. So this is a horse who wants to route all day. Here on the stretch out now for Bill Mott. First time with him. I think Tiz Shady, you know, he got a, a decent bear speed, fi speed figure in there, 77. That was just his first race. So I think the combination of the sprint to route as well as this being his second start is going to make him a really interesting player in here and one that people don't know and i think you know with a lot of these el kybir showing up classy class showing up pletcher s3 in here you're going to get a good price on him and to me he just looks live yeah i thought the pace scenario was going to be a little bit different this time i i think el kybir the last time you know he won the battle and lost the war mm -hmm. And kind of the same thing with Classy Class. I mean, they dueled all the way around for 54 seconds. I literally timed it, how much they were side by side. And I came up with 54 seconds. And that's unusual. That's a contested, hard, fought fade pace. And, and both horses have kind of mentioned in interviews that they're going to lay back this time. Then you add in the fact that a couple of new horses have speed. And I just think both LK Beer and, and Classy Class are going to lay back a little bit. I, I'm going to still stick with Classy Class. Um, I, I just think that... If he lays a little bit further back, we still really don't know what he's capable of doing. You know, the last time he came off a 60-day layoff, he had missed a few works with a foot injury. Um, his second lifetime race, he stretched out from six and a half furlongs to nine furlongs, which is a very unusual stretch out. We finally get to see him in a form cycle, although he's missed a couple of works since his last race. So I'm still not sure what he's getting in his form cycle, but I do think he's interesting. And, and I do think his price might float up to four to one in this field. Um, I do think the entry is kind of tough. I think they bring some different elements uh, to this race. I do too, and you always have to wonder, this time it's three horses, but even when it's coupled, you always have to wonder if maybe there's some team riding here, you know, one horse to be sent, and you lay the others back, and kind of have someone play the rabbit. So it's definitely something you have to take into consideration, especially when analyzing the pace. Yeah, the horse that intrigues me the most of the three of the entry, I think Blame Jim stretches out. I'm not sure he can get um, eight and a half furlongs, but actually the maiden is the one that I'm interested in. I, I thought he really got bet down that lace. Uh, he warmed up. He's a leggy uh, Indian Charlie guy and, and out of an unbridled song mare. And this is his third lifetime race. And a lot of times horses will jump up and he ran recently. So I just think, you know, what if this race with, you know, a combination of some horses losing some training time, um, he, he at least is in shape and comes off of, you know, he was really, you know, when you lose to that net gain, I think that horse just sitting on a win. So that was a good loss. It was. I mean, I think I maybe would be a little bit concerned that uh, that his, you know, he finished second by neck, but that he seemed to really jump up over 
a muddy surface, so you'd always wonder if that maybe came into play or not. I don't know, it's always a little bit tough for me to take Pletcher horses who lose on debut and especially lose pretty badly because that is one area where he tends to do really well. So I kind of struggle with horses like Uninfluenced who, you know, just really kind of wasn't in it on debut. So you're leaning towards the kind of the new shooter, and I'm going to go with Classy Class on the rematch. But I, I do think it does have a potential of a little bit of chaos in the race. Yep. Now, the Tampa Bay Derby, um, this race came up with a few extra horses, but the top half of the field is very heavy, and I think you can make a case for four or five horses on the top half. I think you definitely can. And this race, I think, easily came up as the most difficult of the preps this weekend and it's kind of interesting because it's that's not a spot where I think we typically expect to encounter a really deep competitive prep race as we found here this year um you know we get carpe diems coming back from a very productive juvenile campaign into the spot and then you have ocean night same same owners coming in here opting to run here instead of the gotham which that was an interesting move, and it almost makes me, you know, you wonder then, okay, is one or the other of these two not as good as we originally thought they were? I suppose we'll find that out here. Um, I'm going to be leaning towards Danzig Moon, though. I've been high on this horse since before he broke his maiden. He, you know, when he did break his maiden over a mile at Goldstream, I was extremely impressed. That was, he was bet down like a good thing, and he won just like that. He broke from the 10 stall that day. So not worried about him breaking from the nine post here. He can, he has a very nice tactical speed. So whatever happens here, being on the outside, he can kind of slot in. Whether it's you know a forward or mid pack, I think would be where you'd expect to see him. And you know he's been working well. Clockers on Twitter have been speaking well about him. He's just one who I think is really sitting on a big race. Now we'll find out here if he's good enough to compete with the likes of Carpe Diem, Super Colossal. Uh, Ocean Knight and that crew, but I think he's very well meant in this spot and he's going to fire a big race here. Yeah, I do want to talk a little bit, bit about Carp DM before I get into my pick. Um, you know, I think Carp DM, you know, a lot of people. Happen. He's been hammered in both pools of the future wager and a lot of chatter and a lot of lists. It's just, I think everybody kind of knows that this horse, he was sitting in last two. He didn't make the visually slingshot move like Texas Red did, but he circled the field, ran the widest of them all, and then, you know, kind of wore down upstart in that final stride. Actually, at the time, I was kind of hoping upstart would win that photo so he'd finish third and people would kind of forget about him a little bit more. But, you know, I think off the layoff, he's very vulnerable here because... When I look at this, I see four horses, like whether or not they're all grade one material, but normally sometimes you look at a race and I just see every horse making a sweeping move going into this turn. I mean, like Danzig Moon, Super Colossal, My John Good, Ocean Knight, like Carpium better come out fully cranked because he's going to get hit in waves here. Yeah, and that's one thing, too. It'll be interesting to see, I think, how some of these horses handle their draw as well. Because, like you say, so many horses like to make outside moves, and that's one reason why I was okay with Danzig Moon being drawn outside, is he tends to like to make that sweeping move on the outside. If some of these others get caught and trapped inside, I wonder how they'll handle that situation. And win or lose, sometimes we learn the most about horses when we see them in those types of situations, especially leading to the derby. My top pick is going to be uh, Super Colossal. I picked him last week in the swale, and he didn't run because it got rained out. Um, I usually am not a fan of war fronts on the dirt, but this horse has intrigued me ever since last summer when he was working out 139 miles, and he worked out that 57 workout before the Breeders' Cup. And I, I just think he's, he's a pretty solid horse. I think his price is going to float up the most. I think there's a lot of mojo on Danzig Moon and... Yeah. And Carpium's going to get hit hard, and Ocean Knight's going to get hit hard. So I think this horse is the one who's going to kind of drift up in odds. Um, I still also like my Johnny Be Good a little bit. He's my, uh, I mean, I just think he's going to be in the mix somewhere. Uh, been working out long, slow, stamina-building workouts, and 
I think this is going to be a demanding race for Carp DM. I, I just don't see him winning. I just think Danzig Moon is sharp. I think Ocean Knight is good. I think Super Colossal could be good. And, and my Johnny Be Good is no slouch. I just think uh, maybe a couple of these horses might not show up in this race, and they really may be better, better meant in the final prep. Yeah, and we haven't mentioned him here, but I think it's worth noting Divining Rod, who lost by only a neck to Ocean Knight, draws the rail here. He is a horse who likes to be forwardly placed, so you'd expect him to go from that spot. Whether or not you think he'd stay the 10th furlongs of the Derby, this is only a mile on the 16th, which he seems like he's been able to handle this distance to this point. He's interesting on the rail, I think, and, you know, he's a horse who is going to get overlooked. And we talk about this sometimes how... You know, maybe Ocean Knight gets pounded down to 3-1. to one. Divining Rod might be sitting there at 10-1. to one. He lost to him by neck last time. So I think you might see some similar overlays like that. And, you know, at any sort of a price, I think Divining Rod is an, the type of sort you would include underneath, whether it be for second or third. But I just think he got a beautiful draw for his running style. Yeah, and another horse, uh, I... I can't make the case for him to really win or run second. I just think he's a decent horse as Moonlight Bandit. Uh, I've had this horse on my stable mail. I was impressed with his maiden win. I like the fact that he's actually going turf to dirt. He's got a long string of workouts. Um, another horse who I think who, this is his second race as a three-year-old, but really, again, another horse who didn't get a full form cycle as a two-year-old. So I could see this horse improving by four or five lengths. Now, I don't think that's good enough to win, but I... I, I I don't think he's going to finish last either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting race. You can go a lot of ways with it. And I just think it's an, it's an interesting race in that people's perception of what horses are far better than others don't seem to be, you know, people tend to think Carpe Diem and Ocean Knight are way better than these. And whether you look at it from a speed figure's perspective, whether you look at it from where the other horses in here have finished behind them perspective, I just think, you know, if these two favorites really get hammered, you're going to find some nice prices in here. Maybe not to win, but, you know, you key them underneath or play them to place for show. And I think Divining Rod's one of those. My top choice will be Danzig Moon, but I, I really do like Divining Rod underneath a fair bit here. And, you know, Carpe Diem, I would, I would be against. I think he's a nice horse. I just think he's vulnerable first time up as a three-year-old, and he's going to absolutely be your favorite here. Um, Ocean Knight, I like him. I just don't totally trust him a ton. His Sam F. Davis was good, but I wasn't blown away. So I'll, I'll probably be looking elsewhere for the top two spots here. Yeah, I just think it's one of those races where, and this, hap this doesn't happen with older horses. It only can happen with three-year-olds and early on. Perception and reality. The perception is, is that Carp DM is four to five, can't lose, 10 lengths better than these horses. Yeah. And the reality is, is even if he does win, he's going to win by a half a length and he's barely going to win. And, yeah. and that's just like, you can't really do that with older horses or horses that have established form, but that's what makes the three-year-olds tricky because the, the hype and the perception and the pedigrees and the trainers all play more of a, a factor than actually handicapping. On paper, Carpe Diem is barely better than these horses, but yes. he's going to get bet like he's a lot better. Um, We'll go out west, San Felipe, a nice field, another horse, uh, another thing where you've got four or five top contenders, and the big guy, literally, Dortmund decided to enter the race. I was surprised to see him enter here. You had told me last week after we filmed that you thought he was entering here based off how he was working, and you were right, and I'm not going to complain because I'm going to be there at the races, and I'd love to get a look at him. Um, I can't go against him in this spot. This is what I've been waiting for for him for a long time now as he's back to getting a nice, decent-sized field with legitimate front-end speed in there. That's when he's going to run his best races. I mean, people have penned him as some sort of grinder that's going to be on the front end, and that's not his style. If you go back to Churchill Downs, when he won that optional claimer there, he came from a little bit off the pace. Same when he broke his maiden. I think he's a far better horse when he's allowed to come from up the pace. But when you're running in four or five horse fields, you can't get away with that. You have to be up close. So I think we're going to see his best effort in a while in this spot. I think he's definitely going to improve off the Robert B. Lewis coming into this spot. Um, I'm really excited to see him. And I, he's the horse I'll be singling and keying him on top in this spot. 
the only re other horses I'm really interested in, and not to bet, but maybe more just to see, Bolo's one of them. I think, you know, I don't know if he's going to dirt. We'll find that out. And his works have been a little mixed. I think some of his works, he's looked really uncomfortable over the surface. Some of his more recent works, he's looked okay. Well, he's handled it all right. I think if he can run well in the dirt, he's dangerous. Because he's physically, he has just matured so much. I was at Del Mar when he broke his maiden. And he looked just like the biggest baby. He had this big frame, kind of, you know, long limbs, long neck, and just no weight on his body at all. He was just such a baby. And seeing photos and videos of him now, wow, has he put on muscle. So uh, he's another one who I'm going to be interested in seeing in the flesh again to see, you know, if that's really how he looks if that's, from what I see in the photographs. So I think if he can go on the dirt, he's going to be a major player just because of the physical maturation he's gone through in just a couple months but that's going to be a question here and Bolo seems to be a popular enough horse that I think his price is going to be too short to take him given the uncertainty of how well he's going to go on the dirt um, if you're looking to play people underneath um, Dortmund I think the one to use is Lord Nelson on the rail people have really given up on this horse they say he cannot route so I expect to be in him to be an okay price I don't, I don't fall for, for that um, belief at all. I think he definitely can route. He has valid, legitimate excuses, and every time he's trying to route, um, his last race was very, very, very nice in the San Vicente. He hopped at the start. He was wide, covered much more ground than Texas Red in there. Steady coming home, and he still won it you know, by a neck, won it well enough. So him on the rail with his speed, I think, is very dangerous, but... I think Dortmund's going to be really, really tough to beat here. But Lord Nelson, I think, is one to use underneath. But I'll be keying Dortmund on top. Yeah, my top pick is Dortmund. I kind of made up my mind. I'm not ever going to pick up a, a pick against him until he loses just because a horse like this is going to, at the end of the day, going to win a lot of races, I really think. Um, whether or not he wins the Derby is a whole other game. But uh, I agree with you. He People have miscast him after these last two races. He finally gets to sit mid-pack. He's finally going to get some speed to run into. Um, I still think this will be a hard race to win. I mean, I, I think Ocho 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 is a good horse, and, uh, you know, Prospect is a nice horse. Um, I do want to mention about both. I have had a chance to see three or four of his workouts now, and whether even if you put aside whether they're good or not good, I still haven't determined on some of them. I notice this horse is brain in every single workout. Yes. Like he, this horse is going to be on the lead, yep. or he's going to be challenging for the lead, and so that tells me the pitch is going to be hot or contested mm -hmm. because this guy has no, this guy only knows one way to run, and it's just a big monster on the front end. So. I do think Bolo is a key to the race because he's either going to make it a fast pace or a contested race. He's good enough. Uh, I mean, his talent level says he can win it. I, you know, it's always a question. Like I say, his workouts. I just know he's ran and he's going to be able to lead. So yes. uh, I do got that much. Yeah, he's going he to be is, interesting. He he is interesting though because I know, like I said, I was there for his maiden, and he pulled his way all the way around the track on a hot pace and still won. So. Yeah, it's the only way he runs, but somehow he seems like he can get away with it sometimes. Now, Prospect Park, this horse intrigues me more because I still think, you know, he's got two wins in a row. Now he steps up in class. I mean, if you believe in form cycles, like this is a perfect type of horse that could regress a little bit and then really knock it out of the park on his next two. So, he, you know, I'm not so convinced he has to win here. He does kind of have to run in the top three to get a few points to move along that way. Um Ocho, Ocho, Ocho is another horse. Um, you know, I, I just think he's a good, solid, fast horse. And part of my problem with picking him on Saturday, which it really shouldn't be, is just, you know, I've got it in my head that he just he's not ever going to win at 10 furlongs. But again, it's only eight and a half furlongs this week. So you just never know. Like, if he wins, it wouldn't surprise me. But I, 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 I have a hard time with horses like that when I just have it in my mind he's never going to win a 10 furlong race. Yeah, and I think one thing that'll be interesting about this race is, you know, so many of these horses, Ocho, 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 even Lord Nelson's, Ocho, Ocho, Ocho's making his, you know, three-year-old debut. Lord Nelson only has one star. Prospect Park has two, but a lot of these horses, Bolo, will be making his three-year-old debut. I think, you know, Dwarf's Dortmund has kind of a recency edge on several of these horses. 
even if he wins this race, I think some of these horses will get written off for no good reason. You know, because people already have in their minds, if Ocho 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 loses, they'll say, well, yeah, he's a sprinter. If Prospect Park loses, they'll say, well, yeah, that allowance field he beat was awful. So you may be able to find value going forward in the San Diego Derby if some of these horses do lose, because I think you could easily make excuses for them given the recency edge that Dortmund has on them. Yeah, so, and, you know, I think in all three of these races, not so much the Gotham, but in the Tampa Bay and the San Anita race, um, the San Felipe, there's going to be some horses that don't run well, and there's going to be horses that don't run well but have a little bit of excuses. So that's what I'm looking mm-hmm. for. I mean, there's going to be a horse that runs fourth that I won't like, and there might be another horse that runs fourth that I love. So yes. um, I think you really have to put down your expectations for each horse, which one's been, you know, what's the races, who benefited from the paces. But I don't think necessarily the winner of each of these two races is, quote, unquote, the best horse. No. Well, no, and all these horses have their strengths and their weaknesses. And I said before, when I try to watch these young horses going to the Derby, I have things in my mind I want to see from him. So like a horse like Bull, like you said, he's so ranky, only knows one way to go. Well, if they ran this race and he somehow settled off the pace, that's a big deal. Whether he won or lost, if he goes close, that's, you know, okay, he added a new dimension. I'm going to be interested in him going forward. Should be good. Dortmund is just huge physically, and Bolo is just a magnificent-looking horse to watch. And, yeah. you know, even, you know, a couple of horses we didn't really talk about, but, like, the Gomper's a nice horse. I still like Lord Nelson long-term. I like uh, Sir Sampson, and, yeah. I mean, he might be outclassed here, but I thought he ran a really nice race behind Lord Nelson in Texas Red last time, and he's only ever sprinted. So this is be the first time routing. His pedigree certainly points to him being good as a router too so you know someone like him no one's talking about him and he kind of really flew under the radar despite running really well against two big name horses last time yeah no sir samson i think is in the same boat as lord nelson if he doesn't run good here they're gonna say ah he's a sprinter Mm -hmm. and like you're right like this is his first route he's way over his head like it's perfectly logical he really should lose by 10 but like he's the type of horse i would love the next time an allowance non winner is a two because they're going to write him off and, and like you really can't expect him to win this race, but yet you can't run and they don't card, they don't, the allowance nine winners of two aren't going to fill, so you don't really have many other options. Yeah, so much bigger fill than I expected us to get. Didn't expect Dortmund, but I think everything here points to him, and I think a lot of people are going to be surprised at how far he is off the pace early, because like I said, yeah, people have pinned him as this front running grander, and he's not that type at all, I don't think. Uh, is there any horse that you think, I mean, it's not so much what you think if they're going to win or not, but is there some horses this weekend that you kind of like that you're going to be disappointed if they don't do what you want to do? Or I think for me, Danzig Moon's a big one, just because I've really been high on him since he was two years old. He has form at Churchill. His last race was so nice, and I know, you know, the connections have been high on him from the beginning. He was meant to run, and in that gray stakes that international star won up at woodbine got sick wasn't able to run there so they've been high on him from the start and he's had a few you know trouble and races and setbacks that have gotten him to where he only just broke his maiden but you know like i said everything points to him really being primed for this race and i think he's going to run a big one and so if he doesn't that's going to be really disappointing i think for me and probably a lot of other people because of the you know, the, all the horses who've only won their maiden race, he does seem to perhaps be the one taking the most steam. Yeah, for me, it's super colossal. Just because, like I say, I've really followed this horse all along, and I don't think he has to win, but I think if he can come off the pace and close a little bit, I think it sets him up perfect for the Florida Derby. So mm-hmm. I just want him to lose by less than three, four lengths, finish in the top three or four, and actually be moving forward at the end, and, and I think he still fits. If he's fading at the finish and he loses by eight nine lengths then i just have to accept defeat and move on but i do think the horse has is a you know like i say i normally do not like uh this pedigree on the dirt but i I just like his stride and and i I just remember all those workouts and i really was impressed with his race last summer at monmouth yeah and it'll it'll be interesting to see where some of these horses of tampa go it seems like nobody wants to run in the florida derby against cozanne so that might end up being a race where points are up for grabs if they only get, you know, 
seven, eight horses. I don't know. I just know everybody from Florida wants to go up to the wood or to the bluegrass, and nobody seems like they want to run against Kozan. So I wonder if even some of the also rounds from here will end up, you know, giving it a chance in the Florida Derby. Why not? Well, it should be an interesting weekend of racing, definitely. And we've also got the Honeybee Stakes for the Phillies. Mm -hmm. um, and that one came up interesting just because Take Charge Brandy is going to take on the boys. Now, next week, we're going to have the uh, Rebel Stakes. And, uh, you know, we'll also talk about to see how uh, Shared Belief comes out of the big cap. But mm -hmm. um, it should be an interesting re uh, race of uh, watching races. And hopefully we get a few prices to come in here. That's going to do it for another edition of Down to the Wire.